Well, we are on our way up to the mountains for the first of the season snowboarding trip. Finally, Oliver has a lesson. I've got a, some new boots and bindings to try out. We are excited. But the problem was <laughs> we had a little incident yesterday in the truck. We were planning on taking the R1T up to the mountains because it has the 20s on it and it's a little bit better than the snow. However, I uh, slid the truck into a curb and did some damage. <laughs> but for today, we are going to take the R1S. What we did was we went to a shop and changed the tires over to uh, put the 20s on the R1S. So here we are. So with the new 20. 20s on uh, this vehicle it's brought up a couple of issues one is that um, at first it didn't know the tire pressure of each of the wheels however this morning it does which is pretty incredible it figured it out and uh, just put in the tire pressures so I'm looking at the tire pressures and of course I want to see the tire pressures because I want to be sure I'm keeping an eye on the tire that hit the curb yesterday there wasn't any damage I looked really really carefully all around the wheel so um, there wasn't any damage. So I'm not worried about it, but it is nice to have that information right here on the dashboard to be able to uh, see what the tire pressure is. And the other thing is we just don't know, uh, you know, how that tire change will affect range or, you know, if it'll confuse the computer or whatever, but um, find out. The 20s are definitely better than the 22s in the snow. No question about that. They're, they're not, the 22s aren't even designed for snow, so that's not uh, surprising. But the 20s aren't as good as I want them to be. That's one of the reasons that I slid into the curb yesterday. I mean, partly it was because I came around a corner a little hot, but it shouldn't have slid nearly as much as it did. And um, so I don't love the 20s. I like them. I don't love them. So hopefully going over Birth and Pass here, which is a pretty uh, severe up and down, um, will be just fine and we're gonna drive nice and slow to make sure but the weight of the vehicle means that if we were on a very slick road coming down a hill and you needed to make a turn you'd have to go pretty slow to do it safely I started with a hundred percent battery level this morning which um, you know gives me almost 300 miles of range um, of course it's cold so that's gonna be a little bit reduced but and we're going up a pretty big mountain then again, we're going back down the mountain. I don't think we're gonna need anywhere near that, but I wanted to just be safe since it's the first time we've taken this particular vehicle all the way up and back um, during the winter. So I think we'll be fine. We got our snacks, we got our Blackthorn Key book, ready to listen to it. We've got podcasts and we've got a beautiful sunrise coming up here. We are excited. One other thing I'm noticing this morning is that our average efficiency here in the R1S is actually pretty good. Even though it has the 20s on it, which are supposedly a little bit less efficient than the 22s, um, but uh, it's doing a lot better than the truck did on that minus 13 day. It's pretty cold out this morning. It's in the 20s, so not as cold as minus 13, of course, but the difference is that the truck was plugged in overnight because I wanted to charge it up. So it seems to make a big difference. Just coming over the top of Berthic Pass, it's really pretty here. The pass is pretty formidable. It is 11,300 feet Berthic Pass, and it goes um, over the hill down into Winter Park and into Grand County. And it was first uh, surveyed in 1870 by the surveyor, uh, Edward Berthid, and he was accompanied by our mountain man friend, Jim Bridger. So that was kind of interesting. But going down into Winter Park here, it's only a couple of miles, but it's a pretty steep descent and uh, windy. So I wanna be careful on the downhills, especially with this the weight of the vehicle. It's doing good so far. Thank you, snow mode. So these are definitely not the worst of the road conditions that I've had over this pass before. This is the first time I brought the Rivian over the pass, but uh, you know, it could get worse. Uh, but it's still not not great either. The roads are not clear, or the roads are not dry, so there is some ice on the roads. So I think it's a good measurement of how this truck will do over the pass. 
Um, I uh, want to try it over some harder conditions, but definitely would be normally a little bit clearer than this. I am happy to have snow mode here with the low amount of regen because there's been a couple of times on the downhill that I've had to sort of slow down a little more than I wanted to and good news the regen didn't really grab the you know tires and start a slide so it's been working well for that. Nice and slow. All right, we made it over the pass just fine. No problem, snow mode worked really well. The truck worked really well. We've got all our gear in the back of the R1S here. It fits just fine, actually. The snowboard almost fits all the way in the back, but I did fold down the middle section so that I could put the board in between the seats, even though it wasn't really necessary. And um, we got all our crap stuff stuffed right here so that we can reach it, but uh, we didn't need to. We could put it other places. But So here we go, get some snowboarding in. Now would be a good time to have that gear tunnel door so I could sit and change clothes, but it's okay. I gotta say, I'm digging these 20s on the Rivian on the R1S. They look very good. Sort of like them better than the 22s, I think. Not sure, but I do like them. 22s look great for around town, but these just feel at home right here. And I just want to say, this is really great. This is really a long time coming to be able to take an electric vehicle from Denver up to the mountains. We still got plenty of battery to get home, no problem at all. All charged from our house and uh, be able to really enjoy our winter sports and not have the guilt of putting ex leaving exhaust behind us in these absolutely stunning mountains. Well, we made it back home. Just as a postscript, I wanted to give a little bit of information about the mileage and efficiency. We drove almost 150 miles uh, since this morning. We started at 100%. We have 37% left or 111 miles of range left, which means that uh, we used about 63% of the battery. So looks like we could have easily started at 80%. Um, and still made it back comfortably or even 70, but then it would have been pretty tight. So I don't know if I would have done that. We went all the way to Winter Park to uh, do a little shopping, but when we turned around at Winter Park, it was at 56% and uh, we made it all the way back here on 37%. Uh, so only 19% uh, usage in that whole trip back. So most of the usage was going there, 40, 44% going there, 90% going back. So that's actually a pretty big difference. Um, and that of course makes sense because most of it is uphill from Denver. And so a lot of the uh, energy was uh, recovered coming back home. Oh, and the uh, efficiency, 1.96 miles per kilowatt hour. So that's actually pretty impressive. I did get a couple of alerts on the way home saying that the uh, regen braking was reduced because the battery was cold which is a little surprising because it wasn't that cold up there. I mean, it was in the 20s, so uh, I suppose that could, could get the battery cold over a few hours, but we weren't there all that long. So anyway, uh, Rosie did a great job. We had a really fun time, and uh, thank you so much for joining. See you in the next one. <laughs>